So alumni network, it is one of our plus points of Department of Mathematics. We have very strong emotional connect with our alumni members. And as part of the alumni contribution to their alma mater, this seminar is organized right from fixing their, their resource person to till designing the certificate. It has been organized by none other but one a very sweet alumni of the Department of Mathematics, Dr. S. Anuradha, head of the department, Hindustan College of Arts and Science. Dr. Anuradha, she has been an alumni of our department and she has left our department long back. In 2000, if I remember rightly, 2012, she has left the department. But for the past eight years, she has been in association with the Department of Mathematics taking very actively involvement in organizing all the activities of her department, sending her students as participants, and she has been a board member of our uh, uh, board of studies member. And uh, there is uh, no need to introduce Dr. S. Anuradha to everyone who is attending this seminar because she is a very known figure in this region. And she has organized single-handedly more than I think uh, it's, uh, it will come around the 200 to 300 program. And especially in this COVID period, alone, she has organized 180 programs single-handedly with the period of uh, uh, maybe three to four months. And she has a very strong connect. She used to be a Senate member and um, whatnot. She's very first to... Uh, Operations with not only so my first involvement as my first first got the degree from the Department of Mathematics as the first student. It is my privilege and proud to introduce Dr. Anuradha and I request her to conduct the entire meeting from now onwards. And thank you very much, Anuradha, for having introduced to us Ms. Panchia Yi from Taylor's University, and I'm extending a very, very warm welcome on behalf of the Mathematics Department, Madam, to you also. And Thank a formal welcome address will be carried out by Ms. Anuradha. Thank you so much. Thank you, you Sumati, ma'am. Now, I call upon our alumni coordinator, Dr. S. Anuradha, ma'am, Associate Professor and Head, PG and Research Department of Mathematics, Hindustan College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore, to welcome our resource person of today's session and our participants also. Anu, ma'am. Uh, thank, thank you, ma'am. Uh, it's my honor to wish my guru, Guru Pranam, ma'am. Uh, my I wish my guru, Dr. Sumati, ma'am. Without my guru, I'm not standing here to as an academic person as in the world. Uh, my credit goes to my guru only. Uh, with the guidance of my guru only, I achieved everything. So my guru namaskar to my guru, Dr. Sumati ma'am. Uh, I welcome all the respected participants in this international webinar. It's a very great pleasure to me to invite you all for this international webinar. Uh, really, it's a great honor uh, to invite uh, the participants all over India and international participants too. We welcome you all for this function. I welcome uh, Dr. Sumati ma'am as a convener for this function. I welcome uh, the principal ma'am and honorable trustee ma'am for this uh, international webinar. And I welcome the alumni coordinator of the department of PHR Krishnamal College. And I welcome the staff members of PHR Krishnamal College and other members and uh, your respected participants. I welcome you all. I proudly introduce the resource person, today's resource persons. She is none other than Ms. Bang Chioya. She is currently a lecturer and stream coordinator for the Bachelor of Psychology program at Taylor's University. Her areas of research interest include gender and media representation and personality development in genius of ideas and innovative solutions coupled with her expertise knowledge and in the field of psychology. Uh, it's enabling her to be a, a efficient trainer as well. She has conducted multiple trainings and workshops for an in-campus and off-campus community, particularly in the area of personality development. 
I welcome Professor Ang Chia Yi, Stream Coordinator, Department of Psychology from Taylor's University, Malaysia, for this inter international webinar. We welcome you, ma'am. Really, we have an honor to have you here as a resource person, ma'am. Uh, kindly start your session, ma'am. Thank you very much, Associate Professor Dr. Anuha. Uh, and also thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Sumati, for inviting me. Uh, my name is Ms. Pan Chai, and um, today I will give a short brief, a short talk on how to handle crisis at workplace. So I'm going to present my PowerPoint slides now. If you give me a minute. Could everybody see the stream? Just double checking. Yes, ma'am, it's visible, ma'am. Yes. All right. So um, I, I will talk for about 30 minutes on how to manage emotions and stress in the workplace during the crisis time. And um, I have been doing a lot of workshops in um, giving tips for people, children, adolescents, and young adults on how to manage emotions and stress at workplace. So thank you for this opportunity. So for quick uh, outline of my presentation today is uh, we're going to talk a bit about what is your attitude towards your workplace and we're going to talk a little bit about what is stress, how to manage your stress during a crisis and a crisis that's going on right now and then uh, why is it so important that we need to rest. After that, uh, any Q&A, any questions, uh, feel free to ask at the end of this presentation. So very importantly, we all have stress, okay? So it affects our psychological mindset a lot. So what is psychological when we talk about psychological in this context is basically the mental and the emotional that is going around, uh, going on within us. And stress can be seen as something good because it pushes you, it motivates you, but some stress are not as healthy as you want it to be. So stress can have an impact in your mental and your emotional. So why do I want to talk about your attitude towards your workplace? So when we talk about attitude, uh, let me share a little bit of a psychological theory on attitude. Uh, I call it the ABC. So basically it's how you feel about your workplace and the, which is effective. And then if you look here, down here is behavioral, your actions. And C is your cognitive, your thinking process. So if you all can close your eyes, and I want you to think about your workplace. First, I want you to think about how you feel about your workplace. Do you feel energized going to work? Do you feel excited? Or do you feel demotivated that you're not, you know, you're just going to work just for the sake of, you know, putting food on the table? And what are your actions? Uh, so that goes to behavioral. So what are your actions? Do you, are you motivated to do more for the company or your workplace? Or you just want to do what is required of you? And lastly is what you think of your workplace. So these three are interrelated. All right. So you also can think about how you feel about this current crisis time because this pandemic is happening around the world. It's not just in India, it's not just in Malaysia. Um, there's a lot of things going on right now and we can easily feel overwhelmed. So that's effective. So behavioral is what is your action? What are you going to do about it? Right? So the last one is cognitive is your thinking process. Uh, what's going through your mind during this crisis time? So let's identify these two main things. So in any workshops that I do, when it comes to about ourselves, my favorite question that I ask my participants is, what is within my control and what is not within my control? So very simply is that, what can you control? So it goes back to the attitude that I just mentioned. How you think, how you behave, how you act, and how you feel, because that's within me. It's mine. It's my thinking, my actions, and my feelings. But what is not within your control? So whether it's a crisis or workplace, 
a workplace crisis, um, you can't control what other people think of you. You can't control what other people do to you or how they feel about you. Another thing that, uh, that is the main core of this whole discussion is the crisis. Did you want COVID-19 to happen? You didn't, but that's not within your control. All right, so there are a lot of things when we talk about crisis, it's not necessary, it's a pandemic. It could be a workplace environment, it could be the government, it could be the weather. Um, so all this that is not within your control. So usually, uh, when somebody is having stress or things like that, usually the first thing I usually ask my participants is, is it within your control? Or is it not within your control? Okay? So, you go back to this whole thing of uh, how you feel, what your thought process, what you're going to do about it. So, what do we do? So, when you, you face a crisis at workplace, it's very important for you to step back. All right, and then you need to process it. When, when in psychology, when we say process, it means that you need to ask yourself whether how I feel and how I think is actually valid. Or am I just running through emotions because I have anger? Because when you're angry, you, you can't think a lot. You, you can't justify in your head. So you need to acknowledge what are you feeling? What are your thoughts? So most importantly, uh, acknowledge and identify what's going through your feelings, what's going through your thought process, then only try to understand what should you do next. Because a lot of times when we're angry or upset, we, we act with, without very um, smart. But sometimes it happens to us because remember, we're only human. And the more you want to control your feelings, like, oh, I shouldn't feel this way, I should not feel stressed, I should not feel overwhelmed, Please remember, the more you control your feelings, the more it's going to explode much later on. So it's very important that I always tell my participants or my clients when I'm doing therapy and stuff, is that you're only human. And we have to acknowledge that it's okay for us to be angry, it's okay for us to be upset, or things doesn't go your way. So it's very, very important throughout this whole process is to reframe your thoughts. Um, when things happen to us, especially during a crisis, uh, we need to try to see a silver lining. Uh, what, what I meant was that try to see whether, can I do something else? Can I, can I see it a different way? Uh, I'm sure some of you, I'm not sure um, what is going on um, in the college right now. Um, like for me, in, in Taylor's University, a lot of us are working from home. And a lot of them find it it's very hard to work from home because you have your kids in the house, you have your husband in the house, or like for me, it's my husband. And um, you find that it's overwhelming, but sometimes we need to reframe a little bit. Uh, so what I think is that, okay, because now we're all stuck at home, I get to spend more time with my daughter, I got to spend more time with my loved ones. So it's very important that you reframe your thought process when crisis happens. Okay, so this is a very, um, uh, I'm sure most of you know this. So what is stress? See, here is a sign of stress. So physiologically, <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> it's fast heartbeat. So for some of us, right, um, your heart beats really fast. You get moody. Uh, for some of us, stomach upset. Um, for some of us, we bite meals when we're anxious or being unwell. You might experience some form of pain or aches on parts of your body, like your shoulders or maybe your chest, or sometimes even on the head that you feel, you know, um, discomfort. You might feel lethargic, muscle tension, headache, or sore shoulder uh, without any exercising or anything that you're at. This can be signs of stress. So what are the other possible symptoms is sometimes when we are stressed, you don't feel like doing anything. So you procrastinate or you turn around in bed because you're unable to sleep at night because you worry about what's going to happen the next day. Um, well, currently, um, because it's COVID-19, we can't really have social events, but there are smaller social events. Sometimes we don't want to attend social events. Uh, loss of appetite. Uh, for some of us, when we're stressed, we eat a lot, like, 
you know, like you watch a uh, television or you eat a big bucket of ice cream um, when you're very stressed. Uh, you could have short tempered. You could be easily nervous. Uh, for some of us, we deal with drinking more alcohol or even smoking even more. So, um, how do you notice someone is very stressed? They can be very unorganized. You can be unfocused. Frequently at the age, meaning that you're easily agitated. Uh, you, your mindset, especially the mindset, is very negative. Um, you can be forgetful, can't focus, don't feel like getting up from bed to, or to go to work, easily agitated. So a few of this, it doesn't mean you have to have it all to identify that you're stressed. If you have some of this, you are going through some form of stress. And it's very important for you to notice um, that. So stress can come from physical health. It can be from your mindset because your own expectation that you expect things to be better, you're expecting things to, to come along, things like that. Uh, stress can also come from the environment where it's not within your control, such as your colleagues, your bosses, or it can be from your students, for those of you who are lecturers here. It can be from family, friends, it can be from community. Stress can come in many forms and from many other places. And please bear in mind that there's no such thing as we have no stress. Stress is unavoidable and it comes in very different level. The most important thing is how you regulate your mindset and your feeling and your actions that counts. So how do you manage stress and crisis? So what can you do about it? So workplace at crisis time, I'm sure some of you have seen this, um, that there will be gossips going on, rumors that might demotivate you a little bit. Uh, you have some form of expectation that you, we are, the university wants us or the college wants us to do more research because it's to meet expectations. Um, for workplace, for some of you who are lecturers, we need to teach, we need to accommodate our students' needs. There will be work politics, um, let's not deny that. And also maybe leadership. A leader plays a huge role in, in, in how things function in an office. So even a change of leadership does impact the dynamic of the group and how you feel about it. Uh, many places right now are doing budget cuts and um, it does impact someone's well-being um, because that means you need to find ways to earn more money or save more. The other thing is natural disasters that happens. Um, for some countries where natural disasters happen, um, they can't go to campus, and there will always be protesters out there. So those are the things, a lot of things that I've just quickly discussed about is what is not really within our control. So what can you do about it? Okay. My highly recommendation is when, when you have stress at workplace, try a breathing exercise. It works well with stress. So what is a breathing exercise? Very simple, breathe in for three seconds, hold for about four to five seconds, and breathe out for about six to five, seven seconds. So what you're doing when you do, you breathe in, hold that breath, the breath, and you exhale, what it helps you to do is actually forcing more oxygen to go into your system. And that helps to calm the heart rate. Earlier I mentioned when you're stressed, your heart beats really fast. It helps you to calm it down. So if you find it trouble to sleep, do some breathing exercise. It will help you to sleep well in the night. Um, if you're at office and you're very stressed, stretch. Stretch as high as you could. Stretch your legs. Just do some form of stretching. You'll feel better after that. Um, some people do meditation, um, but be very mindful of what's going on in your feelings and your thought process because it helps you to think whether or not how you feel justify what was going on in your workplace. Express yourself. Um, it's very important at workplace, find someone that you could trust, someone that could talk to you about, that you can connect with, talk about it. If you need to talk to a superior, I think you should try to talk to your superiors. 
um, express yourself through art, music, dance, or workout. Um, another way to express your concerns or your stress or what is worrying you is to praise. And I find that it's really helpful when you pray. For those of you who are not atheists. So, another thing that brings us down at workplace and during a crisis is that it's very important to understand where the feelings are coming from. And we tend to blame, when things don't go well, we tend to blame ourselves. Like, we're not good enough at work. We are not competent enough. Um, what can I do about it? And in some religion, or, or like even in psychology, we call that fault-finding. It's easy for us to find fault in yourself, that you're never good enough, you're never pretty enough, you're never thin enough, you're never smart enough. And that is fault-finding. And that really damage your own self-esteem. It's as though you're punishing yourself. So please don't do that. Try to not do that too often. So give yourself some positive encouragement. If you notice some of your colleagues are not, are being down, you know, give them some positive encouragement. And you don't need to be a psychologist to read body language. You, you can, we can sense, we can see the person that somebody needs some positive encouragement. It can be a simple compliment. Hi, your sari looks nice today. I love that color on you. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, again, reframe your mind thoughts. It's not easy, especially during a crisis. But that's why I say take time and reframe your thought process. Very important when crisis happen, press the pause button. Uh, I know sometimes we are very busy. We're always rushing. Uh, our schedules are packed. Um, earlier they mentioned that, um, that we are very busy. No matter how busy you are, pause and reflect. Be aware of your body, your heart, what is your feeling, what are your thought process. Be mindful about it. Another good thing that happens uh, when you take a cup of warm drink. When you have a glass of warm drink, it actually calms you down. Uh, whether it is a, a nice cup of warm milk to, put you, to make you sleep. Uh, well at night. So always a warm drink helps a lot. Appreciate the beauty of your environment, your workplace. And also, um, you can, what you can do is reward yourself. So if let's say you've done, like today, let's say you have done a webinar like me. So I'm going to reward myself with a bar of chocolate. Right? Things like that. Just reward yourself. Be kind to yourself. And another thing that I, I want everyone to bring home today is that please be kind to yourself. So that is the end of my presentation. Any questions? So let me talk about the participants. The yes. session is open for question answers. You can ask the questions to Professor Pang. Oh, check. How ma'am, the you... question is from the chat box, ma'am. Okay. Um, uh, how can you avoid negative people at work? Walk away. <laughs> yes, walk, um, please. Uh, walk away. But there are some people you cannot avoid because they are your team members. They are someone who sit next to you. So um, um, try to brush it off. Sorry, I'm busy, can't talk right now. Keep it at a minimal communication. Uh, but if I were you, if I see a negative person that's always very negative coming towards me, I will turn the other side. Uh, yeah, so that's how, how I would um, avoid negative people. Our participants, you write the things in chat box too. So oh, uh, I just want to show you for some another question. Um, is that why is it so important? Time. Um, I noticed during this crisis, this pandemic moment, I noticed that because we're all very stretched, we're all very stressed out because there's budget cut, there's more expectation at work, um, and a lot of times we care about other people, especially Asian culture. We we always care about our families. We give kindness to other people a lot, but I think it's also very important that you be kind to yourself 
because you're also human being and that, you know, if you are kind to yourself, you're able to give more. Um, how to be... One more question. How yeah. to be positive amongst negative COVID atmosphere? Stay calm. Um, the term that we always use, I use, uh, is the word grounded. Um, stay grounded. It's not very much being um, positive. Um, <laughs> it's basically uh, how to do. It's basically try to show kindness uh, because a lot of people are going through a lot of things. And I think in order to stay positive is to spread positivity. And how you spread positivity is basically show little gesture of kindness. So among this whole COVID atmosphere, um, smile. Uh, I know we're wearing masks all the time and we can't really smile, but you'll be surprised in, in psychology, we actually can smile with our eyes. So when you smile, the eye changes. You know, this guy was smiling. Your set face, you see my eyes will start changing. So smile. So sometimes a simple gesture of smiling to somebody uh, does help. Ma'am, one more question from participant side, ma'am. If mm. some idea haunts me repeatedly and can't me avoid it, what to do? Um, if some idea haunts me repeatedly, um, can you elaborate a little bit what are you referring to? Is it to the participant? Please mm. elaborate the question. Yes, I'm going you... to answer. Uh, Dr. Yes. Minati Shaka, uh, kindly yes. you can ask a question to ma'am. Ma'am will answer you. You can yes, unmute my... your mic when you talk, please. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Ma'am, there are different uh, issues regarding uh, relationship. It may be regarding workplace, which mm -hmm. I want to avoid. But I know something is happening which is out of my control. But I cannot come out of that idea. Okay. So, it's how... Okay, let's talk about your feelings. Okay, let's talk about your emotions. When you think about it, how does it make you feel? Um, think of one, one issue and then how does it make you feel? Very much pressurized. Uh, my okay. normal functioning is getting affected. Okay. It's what could then, let's talk about the mind now. It's what can you do about it? Uh, I intentionally try to get out of it, do something else for the time being. But uh, it again comes back. Can you solve it? Are you able no, to resolve it? No, actually it is uh, beyond my capacity. Uh, there are other persons also involved in these uh, issues. So I myself, uh, if, even if I try my best, I cannot solve it. The whole thing cannot be solved. I just try to take care of my mental health. But uh, sometimes it is uh, coming again and again. Ah, so have you let the emotions out or are you still controlling it no i'm controlling it <laughs> could you find one time um to try to let it go um i may try but i have thought about it uh, several times but uh, after that i thought that if i let my emotions go out then uh, it will create some outburst in some situations which uh, later on it will be difficult to mend. I totally understand. Um, and I totally understand because sometimes when we outburst and it becomes a mess yes. and it takes us a while to pick ourselves back up together and start walking. But um, if that feeling comes again, you yes. need, my recommendation is to acknowledge that it's happening. Yes. And acknowledge that there's nothing much you can do about it because yes. it involves another party. Mm -hmm. And then also ask yourself whether this feeling is valid. And if the emotion comes and it comes in sadness, let's say it's sadness, mm -hmm. 
let it go a little bit. Let it cry out. Okay, okay, man. And I, and tell yourself, okay, I'm not going to control my emotions anymore. I'm going to be kind. I'm going to allow myself for this whole week to let my emotions out slowly. And then uh, tell yourself that, you know, I'm going to be kind to myself because I can't fix it. Yes, no. Let me give you, let me give you one example. Um, like for me, like um, someone has passed on for me and I do not know, there's nothing I can do to change the reality. Yes, but yes. when I think of that individual, it saddens me, it puts me upset. So what I would do is to think of the good times I had with this person and convince okay. myself that I've accepted that this is my past. This person is no longer around or this person can't do And I'm not sure our scenario is the same, but mm -hmm. basically you need to process and acknowledge that this will be part of my history. Okay, I understand ma'am. I will try. <laughs> yes. I will try to do it. And thanks a lot for uh, sharing your views and uh, telling tentative solution to my problem. I will obviously try. Yeah. If you need more, I will leave my contact email with um, Dr. Aruha and then just email me. We can talk more because, uh, yes, yeah. I yes, ma'am. Like ma yeah. Thank you, Anuradha, ma'am, too. Ma'am, one more question from uh, YouTube link, ma'am. Uh, somebody complained, we are in a heavy work, how to avoid it? From Manikand and Krishnamur. Could you repeat? Somebody blame, we are in a heavy work, how to avoid it? How to avoid heavy work? Yeah. Blaming, how to avoid that others are blaming that we are having heavy work. How to avoid others blaming for having heavy work? Yes. How to avoid others blaming for Hey, you cannot, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> that I, I'm very sorry. Um, this whole freedom of speech, everybody has the right to express. Um, there's nothing much we can do, but it's to only how you receive that information or that, that word. When people blame you or somebody, um, um, I don't know, blame you for something that you didn't do, even you did with a very good intention and people still misunderstood you and mislabeled you or call you names, there's nothing you can do about the other person. All you can do is what can I do about myself? So how do we, mm, I would say, I would, if they want to blame and then if they're going to backstab you behind at workplace, there's nothing much you can do. You just have to process it that, um, you know, that you did your best as an employee and that, you know, hopefully things will work out. I hope that answered the question. No, 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 no question. Yes. Uh, one more question from participant side. Sure. Uh, I was under stress in my personal life due to one month failed marriage. Mm -hmm. But now this COVID time has disturbed my work also. My PhD work has gone late for one year. And with this few, a few more of COVID is spoiling my health. What should I do? This question uh, is from participant side. Dear participant, I'm very sorry to hear that um, that your person your you are under stress in your personal life, and that it disrupted your work, and also that your PhD has gone late. I'm sure it's very stressful because uh, I'm also doing my PhD right now, so um, I cannot imagine the stress and the pain that you're going through. So. Hang in there, whatever it is. Please hang in there. Um, if I could give you a hug right now, I'll give you a hug, whoever this participant is. Um, what can you do? Um, we can, first of all, be nicer to ourselves. Uh, you are a 
mature adult, you need to take self. I think you need to take time off uh, and manage yourself because the whole COVID is health. If you can't be healthy physically, you're not able to give more things to society or your health. So please take care of your health first. Um, try at least. Um, it's not easy. Uh, maybe a simple exercise also, I'm, I'm sure it will not be easy to get out of bed and exercise or do things that makes you happy. But you need to start somewhere. Just little steps, baby steps. And uh, once you get your health back up, because you're, if you're not healthy, right, your mind and your feelings will start to be very messed up. Um, so try to build your physical health first. Then only worry about other stuff. Because like I said, you can only control yourself, but not other things. So focus on yourself first. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself. And hopefully from there, we can slowly, slowly bring ourselves back up. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Professor, for your nice counseling. Uh, many questions from this uh, participant side. Uh, one question is, how can I manage when someone demotivate in working place? Uh, when someone is demotivated in working place, I assume that um, whoever asks this question, um, Namata, how can I manage when someone is demotivated in working place? Um, do you want to motivate this person? So it is, how do you, if you know someone is demotivated, usually what we want to do is motivate them back at that person. But sometimes what you could do is just to check in on that person on why you why they are demotivated it could be because of personal health it could be because of family or because of covid it can be many reasons and that person is bringing that stress back into work and therefore that person is very demotivated um be there for that person um, pump their spirits up try but maybe most important of all is to be there with that person if you care about this person Uh, Professor, okay. another question. Hmm. For the past week, I could not concentrate. I'm going through emotional stress as my best friend in my workplace gave resignation. For the first time in my 12 years, I don't look forward to go to my workplace, even if situation normalized. Please help me to overcome. Uh, um, another I'm question. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to help you to overcome. You have to make that decision for yourself. Uh, I know it must be hard that your best friend has been with you for 12 years, I guess. And now it's like there's a hole in your heart and you, you're not motivated to go to work. Um, you're not looking forward, even the whole situation is normalized. Um, but I'm sure there's a reason why your best friend at your workplace has given resignation. And I'm sure your best friend wants you to be happy. This person is your best friend. It's not easy because it's some form of a loss. Um, but, you know, keep the good memories that you had with this best friend as the main core rather than the part, the resignation part, because you've been with this person for so many years. And resignation part is just a small little memory of it. So don't let that little negative little memory stays with you. Let the good memories that you know that your best friend has been there for you. And keep in touch with that best friend. And then figure out where your best friend is going. Keep in touch. And I'm sure your best friend do not want you to be um, down or be in this situation too. Thank you, Professor. Uh, another question from participant side. Generally, the pets like cats and dogs are the best to reduce one's mental pressure. Instead of yes. few people, what is your suggestion on this, please? Uh, theoretically, in psychology, it is proven that pets such as cat dogs are best to reduce mental pressure. Um, so if you want to have a pet, you can have a pet. Um, not everybody could have a pet of like, you know, people who are asthmatic or people who are allergic to fur. Of course, you cannot have pets. Um, yeah, so 
what is my suggestion? Is it suggestion for people who cannot have pets or what would you be asking? But pets do help to reduce um, um, stress. That's why there are therapy that use pets to reduce stress, whether it's ducklings. I've seen ducklings. I've seen horses. They use horses for therapy. I used to um, do therapy with horses because I used to ride horses. So I have helped people to overcome trauma using horses. So that, that does help. Um, yeah. I hope that answers. If I'm not answering your question, please type again. Thank you, Professor. Can I ask one more question? Yes. I just want more participant sign. Mm. I personally feel in today's hurry life lifestyle, mostly no one is bothered about other problems. Uh, so, need your opinion on the above query. Can it work? I repeat once again, Professor. I uh, personally feel in today's hurry life lifestyle, mm. mostly no one is bothered about others' problem. So, mm. need your opinion on the above query. Can it work? I'm sure there's somebody out there, at least one person out there, I always believe that would make time and care about you. Because um, no, being busy, being... I live a very hectic lifestyle. Um, I, I work hard. I uh, have a crazy busy schedule. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter. Um, but being busy might not necessarily be a good thing. So uh, I think we're all humans. And it was nice once in a while that if you can have one or two friends or people or family members that, that you know that will care about you. And I'm sure there's somebody out there that cares about you and love you for who you are. And they're willing to spend the time to care about your concerns, your problems, whether it's family problems or workplace problems, um, that person will be there for you. So we just have to find what is our social support that we have. So it's very important for you to find what is your social support. Respected participants, ma'am have answered all the questions. Any questions from your son? Uh, ma'am, one more question, ma'am. Sure. Uh, it's from um, Dr. Gayatri. Hello, madam. How are you doing? My question is how to overcome financial stress? I'm doing well. Uh, overcoming financial stress, unless money falls from the heaven or from the sky, then our financial stress has no issues. Uh, financial stress will take a while. Um, you need to talk to a financial expert on how you can because it depends what kind of financial stress, there are many kinds. There's mortgage, there's debt, there's personal loans, um, things like that. And I think it's very important that um, you talk to a financial advisor. Um, most importantly, uh, financial stress, because I'm not too sure what financial stress you're referring to. Financial stress, also the, th the term financial stress that we, I hear from people, is um, the couple financial stress. That means that um, who is pulling on more weight, who is paying the bills and things like that. So it really depends um, which aspect of financial stress that you are referring to. But um, yeah, so if you can give me more specific, that would help me to help you answer. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, any questions, participants? Any questions, participants? Ma'am, really, thanks a lot for your counseling. It's an interesting session. You have given a nice counseling to us, too. Uh, thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. to the Krishnamal College member, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, ma ma thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh there is a formal vote of thanks, ma'am. Good afternoon to one and all present here. It's my privilege in proposing a vote of thanks for this international webinar on managing psychological emotion 
and stress in the workplace during the quiz time. First of all, I thank our managing trustee, Ms. G. Rangaswamy, and our chairperson, Srimadhi Dr. Nandini Rangaswamy, for providing us various resources and opportunities. My thanks also due to our beloved secretary, ma'am, Dr. N. Ishoda Devi, and our principal, ma'am, Dr. S. Nirmala, for guiding us in all our activities. It's my pleasure to thank our resource person, Mrs. Panchi Yu, uh, Taylor's University, Malaysia, for accepting our invitation in a very short span of time and delivering an excellent speech on stress management. Thank you, ma'am. Now, I thank our convener, Dr. K. Sumati, ma'am, head of the Department of Mathematics, for motivating us and encouraging to do various innovative activities. I am also highly grateful to thank our alumni coordinator and our friend Dr. S. Anuradha ma'am for supporting us in various ways for conducting this international webinar. Thank you Anu ma'am. I thank all the participants for their presence in this webinar. Also, I thank all our staff members of the Department of Mathematics, Aided and SF for their constant support in all the activities. Thank you one and all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, respected participants. Thank you, the resource person, Professor Pan. Oh, really, it's a thanks a lot for giving us the opportunity to invite you as a resource person. It's a great session we had at the earlier and this time also. Thanks, Professor. Thank you. We'll meet you soon in another webinar. Yes, we'll do. Thank you. Thank you. I request the participant kindly fill the feedback form to get the certificate.